What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I'm gonna help you take your lifestyle to the next level with this video right here. If you see me looking down in this video at all, just know I'm getting used to this new pop filter I just got for my mic. I am recording my audible version of my book now. Super excited about that, but I just wanna let y'all know if I look down, that's why. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about is a big problem that I see that a lot of people have in life. And that's not being able to save as much money as they hope. And sometimes I get surprised with how many times I actually mention automate your savings on this channel. But like, I just come into contact with a bunch of people who never even think of this. And it's no judgment because there was a time when I didn't think about this and I didn't even know that this was possible. And even right now, I get a ton of coaching sessions where I'm talking to people and I'm giving them insight and ways to save more money or to get into a better financial situation. And a lot of times, surprisingly, they say, oh, I never even thought to automate my savings. And plenty of people who watch my content, they know I'm an advocate for automating your savings, but there's not too many people who've actually taken the time to actually sit down and show you how to do it, because it does take a few steps. It only takes a few minutes to do, but it does take a few steps, and there might be a learning curve depending on who you bank with or how you want the money to flow in general. And that is what I'm here for, to help you solve that problem, to put more money away, to get the things that you want and that you deserve in life, because there's a reason all of us have goals, whether it's monetary goals or just goals in life. And the only way we're gonna get there is by taking the necessary steps. So without further ado, I'm gonna take you to my computer real quick and I'm gonna walk you through how to do this step by step. All right, so we're in my computer right now, check it out. I'm on my teaching vibes today, you know what I'm saying? Got the PowerPoint action going on. This is actually one of my biggest passions in life is teaching people how to do stuff. It doesn't really matter what it is, just something that helps them out or reach a goal of any sort. I just love doing this. Check it out, got the animation going. I'm really on my teaching vibes today. But anyway, we're gonna get into this. How to automate your savings account and save more money than ever before. Let's get into it. All right, so step one, plan out how much money you want to save and when. And this sounds simple. It sounds like, well, duh, Reggie, I already know to do that. You'd be surprised, though, a lot of people don't actually do this properly. So I'm going to walk you through it real quick. So an example of that is I want to automate my bank account to save $250 at the end or at the beginning of every month middle end, whatever the case is. And there is a typo in there, but the show must go on. I corrected it vocally and that's all that matters. And this part is actually really important because when you're saving your money, you need to look at your budget and your money for the month, what's coming in and what's leaving your account every single month. And you need to decide at what point is the best time of the month for me to go ahead and put this amount of money in. Can I put it all in at once or do I need to split it up? How do I wanna do this? You really gotta look at this critically because the whole point of this is to save money and to not reach into your savings and borrow from your savings basically just to make ends meet in your regular account. So if you think ahead with this, you're already gonna know, okay, at the middle of the month, that's when my bank account is the healthiest, that's when I have the most money in there, and that's when I can afford to put this $200 away right then and there. Does that make sense? So we're gonna go to the other example. I want to automate my bank account to save $500 every time I get paid. And you can absolutely set your bank account up to do just that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, but first of all, I wanna just tell you real quick, some of us get paid monthly, but most of us get paid bi-weekly or semi-monthly. And if you get paid bi-weekly, that's every 14 days. If you get paid semi-monthly, that's every 15 days. So there is a slight difference, but if you have either or, it's best to just set your account to automate every 15 days, you'll be good to go. So tips to apply step one correctly. If it's your first time doing this, start low. I cannot stress it enough. Start low and build your and build the amount up each month until you feel comfortable doing this. I can't stress it enough because you know, the biggest complaint I actually get about this when I suggest it to people is, oh, well, I can't afford to do that. Yes, you can literally, if you can afford to buy anything every month outside of your bills, you can afford to do this. You just don't realize it yet. And that's okay. I didn't feel comfortable doing this at first. And that's how I actually came up with my method of doing this to actually go grossly below 
what you think you can do and then add gradually on to it. So let me paint a picture for you. When I first graduated college and got out on my own, you know, 21 years old, all that good stuff, thinking I had liberation and all this other stuff, right? I was actually terrified because I knew I could afford to save a certain amount, but it was just kind of weird putting money into my savings account. So what I did was I just kind of went under what I thought I could do. So like I knew my goal was to eventually save $800 a month. But at the time, I was like, I don't think I can do that right now. So what I did was I started with $200 and then I gradually went up until I knew that I could afford doing that $800 a month and that became $900, then $1,000, etc. This obviously took years to get to, but at the time, it took me a few months to go from like $200 to like, let's say $500. Like I had to feel comfortable with it because I had to get used to paying bills. So I'm telling you, if this is your first time ever doing, it's best to start low. So let's say you really don't necessarily know, like you don't have a ton of experience budgeting yet like maybe you've had a month or two budgeting but if you've only done budgeting for that little amount of time like you probably don't have it down yet because your bills as you will find they're going to fluctuate and sometimes there'll be more bills for example like you might have to pay to renew your registration for your car get your tags updated all that good stuff oil changes, you might get a flat tire, your gym membership might do that thing that most gyms do twice a year when they actually update the facility and they charge you for it or you might have signed up for something free like say Amazon Prime and they gave you a 30 day free period to you know get free shipping basically and you forgot about it and now you pay $14.99 a month and you done forgot to cancel that subscription because you don't even order from Amazon like that, stuff like that, right? So that's what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, these three tips also, I just wanna say real quick, these three tips actually coincide with each other so they're not in any particular order. But anyway, Get crystal clear on the best time of the month to save your money. I already said this, but I can't stress it enough though, because even if you get the number correct, if you do it at the wrong time of the month, you're gonna find yourself borrowing from your savings account and feeling like the method doesn't work. But the method does work. You just have to do it correctly. And these are the tips to do so. So the last tip is gonna be, it's best to already have a budget in place before you even get started with this. And that's the main audience I'm talking to in this video because chances are you have started a budget or you've at least budgeted before so you're familiar with the process. And um, by the way, I do have a budgeting video, how to master budgeting and saving your money. And what that video shows you how to do is, is look at your budget and determine when is the best time of the month for you to put the most money away. If you've been watching my content for a while, you know that I always say factor saving into your budget. That should be seen as a bill that you pay to yourself. And it should be the first bill that you pay yourself, but not everyone has the same financial situation. So just make sure you pay it to yourself, even if it's not the first day of the month. If it's in the middle of the month or at the end of the month, you still paid yourself for that month. And you want to be consistent with what that number is that you're paying yourself every month. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because if you do have that budget already set in place, you already know how much money you save every month anyway. But you probably miss the mark a few times because I know I have. I've set many times in the past a budget and then I put savings in there. And I think at the time it was like five, six hundred dollars, right? But I would miss the mark somewhere because I either waited too long in the month to pay myself to where I actually didn't have that much money left over because let's say I paid all my bills and then I went spending money. I didn't like necessarily splurge, but I just spent money on other things. So I didn't prioritize my saving like I was supposed to. And if you're falling in that trap, that's why this method is perfect for you because if you go ahead at the beginning of every month and you say, okay, I already know this is what's in my budget and I already know this is what time of the month I'm more financially sound and I have more money in my bank account so I can afford to do this. I'm gonna do this early so I don't forget. That's why it's best to get into a budget. So anyway, we're gonna go over to step two. Can I get an amen? So step number two, once you get all the number crunching and all that fun stuff out of the way, you wanna to go to your banking app or the website if you don't have the app. I think the app is probably the best thing for most folks, probably the easiest to navigate. Um, and then you want to set the amount and the date that you want the money to transfer from checking to saving. Now that sounds a lot easier than it actually is. Like even today before I made this video, I went to go do it myself again, just so I could for demonstrating purposes. And I got confused along the way. So like it's not the easiest thing. And if it's your first time ever doing it, you might spend 10 minutes just trying to figure the thing out. And that's okay because it's 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes well spent because you're never gonna have to spend it again. 
once you get it the first time, it'll be just like riding a bike. And something else that I want to point out with this is remember, it's going to be automated. So after you set this up once, it's just, it's passive now. You're saving money passively without having to lift a finger. So I say that to anyone who is trying to automate their savings and they watch this video and they try to do it and it, it takes you a little longer and maybe I made it sound a little easier than it actually is in this video and in other videos. It might take a few minutes to figure it out, but don't get discouraged. Once you get it set up, you'll be golden. Trust me. So without further ado, I'm going to pull my phone out real quick. I'm going to show you what's up with it. All right, so obviously everything is definitely going to be blurred out so y'all don't see all my banking information and all that good stuff. But I am showing you the app that I use for my bank and I'm showing you exactly how I do it. So the easiest way to do it is wherever on your banking app, I don't know if you have Wells Fargo, Bank of America, some credit union that's near you or something of that nature, but they're all pretty much identical. And I'll show you that in a few minutes when I give you a few more tips at the end of this video and I'm showing you a different account completely. But anyway, make a transfer. And as you can see up here at the top, it says transfer on the left. And then on the right in gray, it says schedule. You wanna click schedule. Okay, as you can see, I already have something set up here, but let's say I wanted to. All you do is from which account to which account. And this is within my home banking account. So I have checking and my savings account, right? So I might say from checking, I would choose from checking to saving. And then I would choose the amount. Let's say the amount is a thousand. You know what I'm saying? And then the frequency, you set the frequency for the date of whatever the date is. Boom, boom, boom. Done. And then you do it either, I got a text, <laughs> but uh, you do either every week, every two weeks, twice a month. You know what I'm saying? Every month, you can set it up like that. That's what I'm telling you is you can set it up to whichever frequency works best for you. And you can even set a memo of what it's for just to kind of be like a little reminder. So it could be something like savings, automation, probably like a nerdy way of naming it I'm pretty sure you guys are more clever than me at naming things but that's you know what comes to my mind but that's how you do it it's literally that simple to do I didn't obviously do it because I already have an automation going on but that is the general way of doing it all right so step three and this is arguably the most important step outside of setting it up right so this step is all about sustainability. Make sure you actually have the discipline not to touch the money you put away in your savings. And I can't stress it enough. Why? Because of the simple fact that the, the whole reason that this method exists and the whole reason that I use it so heavily and basically swear by it is because of this. It's because I know that it takes discipline to save money. If you want to save $200 per paycheck or $1,000 a month or $400 a month, whatever your goal is, I don't care if it's $7,000 a month. It takes discipline to do it and it also takes memory to do it because if you're doing everything manually, you have to remember, oh, I got payday. Hold on, hold on a second. Let me stop everything. Let, let me stop everything I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? The world has to stop for me real quick. Let me go ahead and put this into my savings account. Not that many people are going to remember to do that, first of all. And some things might come up. And this actually does happen pretty often, more often than you may think. It especially happened a lot pre-COVID, but a lot of things come up. So, like, it could be like, you know, you just got paid. Everything's going pretty good. You know, your friends invite you out to happy hour or your friends invite you to a concert or something. Or you decide to take a trip somewhere, I don't know, California, somewhere. And now all of a sudden your bank account is lower than you thought it was going to be because at the time it looks like you have money and you might have even mentally thought in your head, oh, I already went ahead and put my savings away for this month, even though you didn't do it. This eliminates all of that piece of it and it eliminates the need to be disciplined because your bank account is having that discipline for you. That's why this is a passive method of saving your money. But since I helped you take that piece of discipline out, the discipline that I need you to have is to have the discipline not to touch your savings while it's happening. Because the thing is, your savings is gonna get pretty fat pretty quickly with 
like quicker than you think because you're really not even going to be thinking about it. And one day you're just going to look and you just notice your savings is like doubling every few months. And it's like, man, I'm doing something. And you are. Just don't touch that money because you're going to feel like, I don't know, man, that pair of shoes right there. I don't, I don't know, that PS5 over there. I, I can afford to take this money out of my savings. I don't know, man. Kevin Hart usually doesn't come to this town, but he's in town today and he's doing a show. I got to go see it. And I say that because I actually give that specific example because Kevin Hart actually was in my city not too long ago doing shows. But you see what I'm saying? Things are going to come up that you're going to think about. Let me go ahead and take this 500. It ain't nothing. I can, I can make up for it next month and you can. But what if you do that three months in a row? You don't want to set yourself back with savings, especially at a time like this. We're in a recession, first of all. We're still in the middle of a pandemic, first of all. You get what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to make these types of rash decisions just, you know, for temporary happiness. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. And even if we weren't in a situation like we're in today, I would tell you the same thing because the idea is that if you're wanting to build financial stability and if you're wanting to get good with money and if you one day want to be wealthy or rich or rich, rich, as the kids say nowadays, you have to build this foundation and this base right here, right now. There is no better time than right now. And if you feel like you can add more money to the automation, this is, you know, another step within step three. If you feel like you can add more money, add more to the automation. But let the time, you know what I'm saying? Let some time go by first. Test it out. See how this is working. See if, how comfortable you feel putting the amount of money in the automation throughout the entire month. And if you feel comfortable doing that, you can add some more and keep adding more because what's going to happen is you're going to find that, oh, I can actually afford to do a little more. Oh, you know what? I don't know why I didn't set my automation for $100 more last month because I can really do this amount. of. And once you see that, it's going to it's going to feel good because you're going to be able to put more away and you're not going to be missing it. And you're not going to be spending it aimlessly. It's going to be going to an intentional place. It's going to go towards your future. Whatever your reason for saving is. If you're saving for a car, for a TV, if you're saving for your future, if you're just saving for an emergency fund, if you're saving for three to six months worth of expenses, or like I like to say, four to eight months worth of paychecks, it's for an intentional cause. Even if you're saving money right now to put some money into investments, that's good too. But you're saving it and it's going there intentionally and you're not wasting it. That is the most important part. And then here's a pro tip for you. As you earn more money, I highly recommend increasing your savings. So as you get a raise or promotion at work, increase your savings because that's going to be consistent. So you might as well consistently add on with it. Or even if you do something like, even if it's not work related, if you start like a YouTube channel and it's making you some money now on the side, or if you have a side hustle or a side business and it's making some money on the side, obviously these things can kind of fluctuate a little bit, but add a little more money to your savings once you have more streams or more income in general. That's what I would advise to do. I've done it and it has not done me wrong. And, the, and I just want to say this, a big point of this guide is not to penny pinch. It's to win big by making smart decisions up front. I don't want you guys saying, oh, I can't eat out. I can't buy the stuff that I want. I can't do anything I want to do and feel like you're in money prison. You know what I'm saying? Because you're on a diet or a budget. Some people call them financial diets. That's why I said that. But no. It's all about making the smart decisions up front. So if you already saved the $600 that you've wanted to save this month and you have some money left over for leisure or fun or festivities or entertainment or whatever you want to call it, you can go do what it is that you want. But it's all, it's all about you can have fun, but are you reaching your goals? And if the answer is yes, by all means, have fun. All right, tips to apply step three correctly. Check your account every single day. You should be doing this anyway, but I know not a lot of people do it. Uh, it's because you probably don't think to check your bank account every day because it's, it's like it's a bank account. It's secure. I get it. But I think it's important to check it every day because 
for one, it'll give you a good idea of what to anticipate. And eventually, I promise you, if you do this enough, you'll get to a point where you know exactly how much money on which half of the month is going out exactly literally to the dollar. You already know by default, yep, it's gonna be rent, it's gonna be my phone bill, it's gonna be my internet bill. And then I know the second half of the month, it's gonna be my gym membership, it's gonna be my utilities, it's gonna be my car wash membership, something like that. But that's just examples of what you could expect at what point of the month, what to expect. And once you get to that point, that's going to help you identify which part of the month is best for you to save the most money. You can also identify any mistakes you made. So maybe you overstretched and you thought, oh, I thought I could save $250 at this point of the month, but I was, I was mistaken by like $40 or whatever the case is. Maybe you actually needed that $40 to go towards something else that you weren't thinking about at the time. That's why this is so powerful if you if you pre-plan before and you already have a budget set in place. But that's why you want to definitely check it every day. Even if you do have a budget in place, you want to still look at your bank account every single day. You never know what might happen. You might wake up one day and see negative $100. Like, well, what happened? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be caught by a surprise way after the fact. You get what I'm saying? When you're getting emails and stuff in the mail talking about something, you have an overdraft. You don't want that. And what I'm about to say actually coincides with what I just said. Make adjustments as needed. So either add money or take away money according to your needs and according to how it's going. That's why I always say go under what you think you can do and you won't fail. The only thing that could happen is you could be like, man, I should have added more. So you, I'm going to increase it. But it's better to increase it, of course, than to decrease it. And with that said, you set it and forget it. And by that, I mean you set it. You don't touch your savings account. You forget about it. You just let the money accumulate because that's money you're not using anyway. You still check your bank account every single day, but you set it and you forget it. Once you're comfortable with the amount and you don't want to add or take away to it anymore. You set it and forget it. You just let it fill up. That's all you do. But anyway, that's my saving tip for today. I hope y'all liked this video. And I actually really like doing this. So you're, you're going to probably see this a little bit more often. And if you want some more tips on saving money, making more money, getting out of debt, things of that nature, anything personal finance and personal growth related, you can follow me on other platforms on Instagram. You can check out my website. If you want a free coaching session, check out my website. All this linked in the description. Check out my book. You know what I'm saying? If you want some really good insight on saving money, making more money, all that stuff I just mentioned. And hit me up on Patreon if you want to. I'm currently rebranded, so I haven't posted for a while. But either way, if you decide to do it now or later or never, it's, it's going to be there. You get what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm rambling now. That's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.